this is Deborah Baker with Trusted Cease. Today we're talking about how to secure your online account using MFA or multi-factor authentication. In this module, we will dive into chapter two of my book, Multi-Factor Authentication. My book is CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience. It's available on Amazon. This is a critical aspect of cybersecurity that significantly enhances the protection of your digital assets. This right here is just a quick overview of chapter two. There will be a more detailed course and also a live course that will be available. You'll have to check out trustedciso.com to learn more and a certification. So why is MFA so important? Well, MFA is crucial because it significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access to your system. According to Rory Sanchez, as CEO of True Digital Security, almost every phishing attack could be prevented by using multi-factor authentication. It's also called two-factor authentication. Additionally, Melanie Maines from Microsoft Security has stated that MFA can block over 99.9% of account compromise attacks. These statistics highlight the effectiveness of MFA in enhancing security and protecting sensitive information. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, is a security mechanism that requires more than one method of authentication to verify a user's identity. So typically, MFA combines something you know, like a password, something you have, like a token or pass key, and something you are, such as your fingerprint or facial recognition. By using multiple factors, MFA provides a much stronger defense against unauthorized access compared to traditional single factor user ID and password authentication methods. There is a shift in the marketplace towards passwordless, and that's basically using a pass key, and you will see that being offered by both Google and and Apple and some other, you know, online sites. And it's really, this is a great way to add multi-factor authentication. So now you're going to have a pass key. What you need to do is download password manager, such as I like to use password um, sorry, I like to use Bitward, but you could also use one password or last pass. And essentially, <clears throat> it will create strong passwords for you, unique passwords for every single website, and you can store your pass key in this password manager. This is very important because if you, let's say you're a Mac user, if you store your pass key in the Apple keychain, the problem is if somebody gets access like your pin code, which you, by the way, you need to set a pin code on your phone, then they will also have access to these pass. So there's a separate pass key for each site, whether it's your bank or your email. So another option is, and we'll be talking about this in a minute, but you can actually use a second factor um, pin code like with Google Authenticate. These methods such as just a user ID and password, it far surpasses that and makes your accounts more secure. So what you need to do is your email accounts, your social media accounts, your banking account, all need, you know, your PayPal account need this second factor. So I would first start with your email, your bank, and so on. Some of these, you know, accounts will already have like built in where they send you a code where they, um, you know, already kind of have built it in. But if there is another way, if they offer two-factor and you can always go into the settings of that application and check, you want to do that and set it up. So these are the different options. So Google Authenticator, there are other ones on the market too. Go into your application, configure two-factor authentication. Typically you download Google Authenticator to your phone and then you configure the two-factor. You go into the settings of the application and it will give you a little, you'll, um, QR code that you will scan and then you go into Google Authenticator and you'll do the plus sign for add new scan with your camera scan the um, the QR code what will happen is like you go into Google Authenticator you hit the plus sign and then it it will 
you know, ask you the question and basically it'll allow you to scan the QR code. It'll say like scan QR code and then it will actually put it into the app. So, and then the other option is you can use a pass key. Like I said, you just need to make sure that you download Bitwarden or LastPass or 1Password to store it. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to pick up a copy of my book, A CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience. And for more information on how to be cyber resilient and download the Cyber Resilient Roadmap, go to my website, trustedciso.com. Thanks for watching.